Hello and welcome, this is Roofmonger, and my friends, this video is a guide to all the systems and mechanics that play in Grand Blue Fantasy Versus. So as of the time of me making this video, the game's still not out for roughly another two weeks in the North American territory, and I figured, hey, while we're waiting for the game to come out here officially, let's just showcase how the game itself works. So this video will probably be a bit long because I'm going to be showcasing a lot of the various features of the game. So if you want to skip around, there are timestamps in the video description and then the pinned comment if you want to just skip to anything you want. And with that said here, let's just talk about how the game works. So I'm going to be going over a lot of the unique aspects of the games, the basics of offense, the basics of defense, and all points in between. So the first thing I would like to talk about for Grand Blue Fantasy Versus, before we get to the more generalized concepts of offensive stuff and defensive stuff, is the skill system as I find this is really what differentiates Grand Blue from other fighting games. So the skills are what you see here at the top of the bar here, uh, just underneath your health, and they are everything you have to work with. So say for example here, uh, Lediva being a grappler has a spinning pile driver, right? Now, if you look at the top here, underneath the health bar, if I whiff this move, you can see it just kind of blank out for a split second, right? So, all special moves in this game have cooldown. Now, sometimes the cooldown is negligible, right? Like, if I do it here, it cools down before the move is done, right? So, it's not an issue, right? But, the thing is, every move can be EX'd, just like many fighting games. So, if I EX move here, I turn gold and all that kind of stuff, right? Now, look at the cooldown here. As you can see, that is a lot more severe. Now, the EX version of the pile driver is certainly better, right? Like, uh, if I do the light version, uh, that's 2,000, medium's 2,500, and the EX version is going to be 3,000, so it does more damage. So, in essence, you're kind of paying for a superior version of the move. Uh, you get more damage, a lot of EX have very unique properties that you can't find in the regular version of the moves, so on and so forth, but while you did it, then you basically are forfeiting the use of that move because while it's on cooldown, you can't do the regular versions at all. They won't come out. Only once it's off cooldown can you use the regular version of the move again. So you kind of really have to believe it's the proper time to use it. Now, on top of the skill bar just being a visual indicator for stuff like your cooldowns and all that fun stuff, you may now also notice there is directions tied to them. We have here at the top here, a left, down, right, and one that just doesn't have a direction. What's that all about? So that is your easy activations, your shortcuts. So there is a skill button in this game and using the skill button uses a skill from your skill bar. So we can do the light pile driver, sure, or we can do the skill version of the light pile driver. Now, the skill versions come out instantly, right? I just hit the button. I don't have to do the 360 pile driver motion or anything, right? I just hit the button. But uh, easy activations do have a little bit of a penalty, but hey, also a little bit of a bonus. The bit of a penalty here is this, one, yes, if I do a regular light pile driver, that's 2,000 damage, right? If I do the easy activation light pile driver, it does 1,500 damage, so it does do less damage. And also, the cooldown is a bit more significant. Now, for the purposes of this move, you get it back almost right away after the animation, but that's different move by move. Now, the thing is, once again, on the flip, you can just do it and it comes out instantly. I don't have to do a motion. I don't have to do anything else. It completely bypasses all the traditional motion requirements. I could do a move that is like a, similar to a Guile Sonic Boom in Street Fighter where you have to hold back for two seconds and hit four in a button. I can walk forward, hit the skill version, and it just comes out. I can completely bypass charge requirements. I don't have any motion requirements other than hitting the button. Um, so conversely now, I guess the one part with motion requirements is the ones that have back, down, and forward, right? And these just map to your other special moves. So that one right there is Lediva's Lariat. That's the light Lariat. I can do it normally by quarter circle backlight and see it co covers instantly on cooldown. But if I do the easy skill version, well, then it takes a little bit longer, right? But once again, I can do it a lot faster without having to do the motion. And much the same applies for everything else. Uh, she has a Dragon Punch Motion plus Button Anti-Air Grab here. And you can do it just down skill and it comes out instantly. No need for the Dragon Punch moment, uh, Motion. So you can do it a lot quicker than you normally could. Now also, the shortcuts, if you hit the appropriate button, they usually default to the light version of the move, but if you hit the appropriate button, it'll become a medium or EX version. So say I just hit my basic skill. This is regular pile driver, right? But if I hit the skill button and medium, it becomes the medium pile driver. 
which once again does less damage than the usual medium pile driver. And if I hit the skill button and heavy, it becomes the EX version. And as you can see here, the uh, recovery time on the cooldown is much more significant than if I just did the regular EX. But once again, I bypassed the motion, so that's kind of the bonus. So when it comes to the skill shortcuts, generally speaking, you are better off doing the quote unquote proper motion for the move. However, that said, there are certain times when you just don't have time to do the actual motion or say you have a move that has a charge requirement and you don't have the actual charge built up, then it's perfectly fine to do the shortcut version instead. Also, even super moves have shortcuts, right? Uh, this is one of the reasons I picked Lodiva. So Lodiva has the double 360 to 720 super, right? And over the years, I definitely know a lot of people have always struggled with this maneuver. Uh, it's always been difficult for people to do 720 motions, right? But for Lodiva, you can just do quarter circle forward skill and your unique action button, and you just get it, right? So you don't need no double 720. You don't need to jump and buffer it or hide it, uh, the motion and the move or whatever. You just do a uh, fireball motion, skill, uh, and your unique action button, and you get it right away. You could be in that split second situation where, hey, I just need this out and I need it out quick, right? Versus the big motion. Now, of course, as we went over earlier here, this version doesn't quite do as much damage, but still, in a pure punish situation, this could be exactly what the doctor ordered, right? Uh, it's less damage, it's 4,000 versus 5,000 to be sure, but there is actual value to do it this way in split second reaction moment versus, you know, just you don't know how to do the motions, right? So now let's move on to the basics of offense in Grand Blue Fantasy Versus. Uh, first up, are there combos? Hey, of course there's combos, right? Uh, and now I guess one of the questions is, is there auto combos? And yes, there is auto combos. Uh, they're not very advanced, though, and they don't do a lot of stuff for you, unlike some other games. They're purely follow-up material. So, to do an auto combo in Grand Blue Fantasy Versus, one, you have to be close to the enemy. Uh, this game does have close normals and far normals, and you can only do an auto combo off a close normal. And from a close normal, you get two additional follow-ups. And now keep in mind too as well, this has to be standing. So no auto combos while jumping, no auto combos while crouching, it has to be standing. And from there, after you get your close normal, just hit the button two more times, and you get your follow-up. And the follow-ups are universal regardless of the button you hit, just so you know. So these are my light follow-ups, and close heavy, and my follow-ups, and they're the exact same ones, and they do the exact same damage as well, right? So however you start it, it doesn't really matter. And they are basically there to help you know hit confirm combos. It's a lot easier to hit confirm off three hits than one hit, to be sure. And you know help block strings and you know, block string pressure if you got it, and just that general kind of stuff, right? Uh, if you're going for long combos, the auto combos generally hurt you more than they'll help you because they do contribute significantly to combo scaling. But yeah, that's the extent of auto combos in this game. It's not really that big of a deal. I know some people are terrified auto combos can like take over a game or ruin a game. In this case, absolutely not. Now, having talked about the auto combo stuff here, is there other ways to start combos? Of course. So we have counter hits, which we'll talk about in a second here. Uh, there's also proper links as well, like a Catalina can link her stand medium into itself. It's something you don't want to mash, because if you mash, you just get the auto combo instead, right? And for her, the link is just better because it'll lead to more damage. It's still hit confirmable, that kind of stuff. So yeah, you got links. Uh, different characters link different ways. Some people can only link off a counter hit. Some people can link into their sweep, right? It's different character to character. Uh, Kalina, I find, is one of the stronger examples because stand medium, stand medium is just a good way to get into, like, you know, various hit confirms and all that kind of stuff, right? Uh, but yeah, there's totally links, just like uh, Street Fighter and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and we got the counter hit combos, which we'll talk about right now. Now, on the subject of counter hits as well, counter hits in this game are a very big deal and how a lot of your damage is going to happen. So counter hits by themselves, they don't actually give you any more damage. A lot of fighting games, counter hits give you more damage, not in this one. So stand heavy for Rasuraga, 1300. If I turn on counter hit, it's still 1300, right? But I give an example here. So stand heavy into light shoulder doesn't combo for Rasuraga. Also, this is a very handy thing about uh, using skills, as I talked about earlier in the video, because uh, that's a charge move, and I can bypass the charge, right? But if I put my counter hit on, and if I get a counter hit, this is a natural combo, right? And he doesn't have much combo potential from a range, so this 
working and doing a fair chunk of damage as well is a very big deal for the character, and this is only possible thanks to counter hits. Also for Vasaraga, counter hit, you know, once again we talk about the links make it possible. Uh, now one of the very biggest things about counter hits. So one of the most important things about counter hits is counter hitting an airborne move. Because if you counter hit someone who's trying to jump at you, the uh, state they're in is not the usual air fall state. Uh, if you just tap them out of the air normally, they just fall to the ground, right? But if you counter hit them out of the air, they are juggled okay to the second they hit the ground. So you can do whatever you want, right? It could be something basic like that, you know, just get an extra hit in, right? But you could go crazy and just, you know, this character dependent, uh, you know, rejuggle them, you know, combo into a super or all that kind of stuff, right? Getting an anti-air counter hit is one of the biggest things you can do. Now, you can do it on the ground. You can do it air to air if you smack them out of the air, right? But counter hitting someone while jumping is one of the biggest routes for combo damage you're going to get in this game. Another aspect of offense of this game is everybody has a universal overhead. If you're playing on pad, it's just L2. So you have to stand block it. That's the way it is. And down plus your unique buttons, the universal sweep, so everyone can high and low to some degree. Obviously, some characters are better at it than others, but hey, there you go. Now, the universal overhead has a pretty big tail in that giant spark you see, right? So it's a visual indicator, but still, you know, it can catch people sleeping. Also, uh, some characters, if you get a counter hit universal overhead, it can lead directly into a combo potential opportunity, and you can just go from there. Also, another big thing to note about the universal overhead. The universal overhead, you cannot be thrown while doing it. So you can catch people who are very throw happy and then just go from there because once again, they'll be counter hit state and you can combo out. So not only does it have an offensive use, if you know someone's very throw happy, be it regular grabs or command grabs, you can just hit your universal overhead and you'll be in a safe state where no throw can get you. Now, speaking of throws, everyone has a basic throw. Uh, you can do a forward throw. You can do a back throw. Also, somewhat unique to this game, uh, you can do a universal air throw. Everybody in this game can air throw, no matter who you are. Uh, a lot of fighting games, air throws are sort of unique character to character. Usually, like, grapplers and stuff have them, right? But everybody can do it in this game. Now, the thing to note here also is throw teching. So, if you tech a throw, hey, that's great. It's about what you would expect in any given fighting game. You bounce off each other, right? But if the defender techs a throw too late, while they will get the benefit of not being thrown, which is great, obviously, right? Uh, they will be put in this knockdown state. So the person who initiated the throw now has heavy advantage over the enemy. So while it's not guaranteed per se, right? You can't punish them for teching the throw. You can now definitely know, hey, it's your turn. And if you manage to get in the corner, you know, world's your oyster because they can't back off at all, right? And you can apply all the pressure you want. A quick note about super moves in this game as well, uh, as far as combo ability goes. So you can absolutely combo into supers, that's not an issue, right? I uh, even have two supers, uh, you have your Skybound art and your Super Skybound art. That's basically super and really big super. Uh, but the thing about comboing into supers, so you can absolutely do it, it's not an issue, but you can only combo into your super off a normal being one of your basic attacks, right? Now, it could be any base attack. could be light, medium, heavy. could be an auto combo. could be crouching. It doesn't really matter what you cancel it from. But the idea here is you can't cancel it off a special move. So if I go, like, light, 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 I can get my super. But if I went, like, light, 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 special, I can't cancel into my super no matter what. My super only came out after the move was already over, right? So when you're looking for combo potential, just keep in mind, I know in a lot of fighting games, like, to take an example from Street Fighter, you can go, like, uh, Ryu, crouch medium kick into fireball, and then go into your super. In this one, you'd have to do it right off your crouch medium kick. So you can only super cancel off normals and not special moves. Also, another quick note here on offense is jumping versus super jumping. So a lot of characters can cross up in this game, right? You know, you jump over their head and you hit them with a move. Uh, Vasaraga is definitely weaker than most characters because you can only really cross up with the jump light. But if you super jump, just like other Arc System Works games, super jump auto faces you, for, unlike a regular jump, which does not auto face you, meaning you can just super jump and cross over with other bigger, better jumps, right? So just keep in mind, if you're looking to jump over someone, just smack them in the noggin, uh, a super jump will let you use normals that otherwise could not cross up normally. 
Now, the final note in the offensive section is a big one. This really matters. Uh, it has to do with enemies crouching. So enemies crouching in this game, you'd think it'd just be like any other fighting game, right? Except crouching in this game, if you get hit, it actually is more hit stun than otherwise. So it's uh, similar to say like getting counter hit, right? The enemy has more time to do stuff to you. Uh, just to give you a really good example, right? So stand medium, the stand medium, it works as a counter hit combo, right? But it doesn't work normally. But if the enemy is crouching and no counter hit is on at all, right? But the enemy is crouching, this is a normal natural combo. That is how much extra hit stun you have on a crouching enemy. So when you are some hitting someone who's crouching, you basically have a lot more combo potential than you normally otherwise could have. Because things that would normally require counter hits or very strict links just sort of become very possible all of a sudden, right? So it does matter quite a bit to visually assess whether or not someone is crouching in a combo. Or conversely, if you know someone has a predication for like, say they're doing footsies back and forth, if they do it with, you know, standing normals, or if they do it with crouching normals. If you have an idea you're going to catch the enemy crouching, then you can do all sorts of really cool stuff. Now, I'm going to give you a combo reference for this stuff here. Now, it's a little bit of a, you know, best case scenario to be sure. This is going to be corner only, enemy is crouching, and counter hit is on. Uh, but it all works together. And here's the crux of it here. So, for counter hit, I'm going to go stand medium into Vassaraga's crouch medium, which is a counter hit only combo. And from that, I'm going to go into light spark here, which is a crouching only combo. So, thanks to it both being counter hit and crouching, we can make this combo possible. So, this is just an example combo, right? Uh, you can get a lot more damage, although that does quite a bit of damage. Uh, you can definitely get more damage of Osiraga, but just to show you how it all works, right? Um, now, in this situation here, uh, when an opponent is standing, uh, crouch heavy into light spark does work. And the second you're like even a little bit far out, it just stops working, right? So it is thanks to the crouching state that lets me do this, and thanks to the counter hit state that let me combo into it directly, right? So that is to show you how these things work together. So with all that done here, um, Grand Blue generally, when you're doing like your back and forth in neutral, is not going to be a very combo heavy game. But when you get someone in the corner, or if you catch someone in the air with a counter hit, that's where a lot of the big stuff's going to happen, right? Now, character to character, it's going to be different, right? Uh, Vasaraga here, I picked him. He's not the most combo-heavy character in the game, to be sure, because, you know, he's the big guy. But even then, as we showed in the corner, he can still get some stuff, right? So, counter hit people in the air and corner are your two avenues where you're going to get the most damage. Now on to some of the more defensive mechanics in this game here. Uh, hey, there's blocking. Spoiler, right? <laughs> you know, you can block high, you can block low, block overhead, all that kind of stuff. It's basically what you think. So here's the big difference. Is this a back to block game or is this a whole block game? And the answer is it's both. So same sequence here. I'm just holding down back and now just holding regular back to block the overhead, right? Uh, but the thing is, I also hold the dedicated block button, which is R2 if you're on a controller. And as you can see here, all I gotta do then is hold down or just let it rock, right? If I hold down, I crouch block. If I let it rock, then it just blocks highs. And same sequence here. All right, now let go, and I block the overhead. Also, just a note here, because there has been some confusion in the uh, pre-release period, uh, the block button does indeed block all cross-ups. So you still have to worry about high and low, to be sure, right? It will not save you from any overheads or lows if you're not blocking the appropriate direction here. But as far as left-right stuff goes, block button catches all left-right stuff. Now, which is better? Well, on a strict sense, since uh, the block button does let you block cross-ups, that's the thing. But the thing is, cross-ups, generally speaking, when you're doing back and forth in neutral, it's going to be rare, right? And if you're holding the block button, you cannot move, right? Versus I can hold back all I want and only block if something comes my way. So you still retain the mobility. So in the end, just use what you like, and probably the best answer is a combination of both, right? Uh, using block button when appropriate, and using your uh, back to block when appropriate as well. Remember your training. Also, to note, there is air blocking in this game, so you can block in the air, but there's a couple caveats Remember with it. Training. So you can air block any air moves, 
and any special moves that are grounded. However, you cannot air block things like a down heavy. I was trying to block there, didn't quite work, right? So grounded specials are fine, aerial moves are fine, but if someone's just actively trying to anti-air you with a grounded move, they will smack you out of the air, just so you know. So you are able to defend yourself in the air a bit, but it is not total. There is also a just defense mechanic in this game. Now, unlike some other fighting games, it doesn't give you an additional frame bonus or let you punish moves that are not otherwise punishable. It's just purely for meter gain. So say I block the base uh, fireball here from Gran, I've gained 2% meter, right? But if I just Remember defend both of them, I, see you. I, see you. I now gain 4%, right? So you just gain more meter, right? So it is good to gain meter with, but don't act like it's a critical thing that you have to know, otherwise you won't work at the game. Uh, but if you have very basic fireballs or basic pokes or just anything you know is coming for free, but you just don't have the space to like punish it with a button or otherwise get around Remember it, then just defend it and you get even more meter than you would normally for blocking. On the subject of recoveries, you do have some say on what happens when you hit the ground. So say you get DP'd here, and if I hit nothing, I just kind of wake up, right? Not too much to it. Now, however, if I were to hit down and a button as I'm getting knocked down, as you can see here, it says recovery. So what's happening here is I get up quite a bit quicker than usual versus the usual state if I just hit nothing. So I'm able to defend myself better, recover quicker, you know, get back to the action that much faster. So all you have to do is hit down and a button as you're getting knocked down. Conversely, if you hit back and a button, you'll do the same recovery, but you'll gain a lot more space between you and the enemy. Uh, this is very useful if you're in the neutral, you know, the back and forth manner of the game and you just need breathing room, right? Okay, he hit me, that's awesome, I'll deal with it. Just give me some breathing room and let's get back to it. Now, once again, this is off any old knockdown. You can hit down and a button or back and a button to gain space and get up appropriately. Or sometimes, hey, maybe they have a really sick setup and you just wanna stay on the ground just a little bit longer to avoid that setup, right? That's fine too, you can do whatever you want. However, so you know, some moves are keyed to hard knockdowns here. So the universal sweep is one of them that's down the unique button for everybody here. And there is no roll possible. So say I record the dummy to sweep me, right? All right, I'm trying to get up, not working. Much same here for try to back roll, not working. I can't do it. So the universal sweep is always a hard knockdown no matter what. Supers as well. Supers for the most part are hard coded here to always get the hard knockdown as well. So you've got to deal with it. Uh, some characters with command grabs as well, those command grabs are hard knockdowns and there is no rules possible. A uh, hard knockdown is the worst situation to be in because since the enemy knows exactly when you're going to get up and you have no choice in the matter, they can put you in all sorts of gimmicks, tricks, setups and all that kind of greasy stuff, right? So when possible, avoid getting hit by that hard knockdown. Now this game has two very strong universal defensive mechanics, meaning every character can make use of them, and that is the crossover which is called roll in most fighting games, and the evade, your which is called the spot dodge in most fighting games. So let's talk about the roll here first. So the roll is done just by hitting forward and your block button. That's it, right? And it is invulnerable to most things, not all things. And the main use is something like this, right? So say you're in that you know traditional fighting game fireball war, and you just want in, right? Like you're getting zoned out, you just want in, you can't match up for whatever reason, I just want in. Well then like, hey, let's get in. So I can easily, just roll past the stuff and that's all there is to it. And I can gain speed forward and gain momentum forward. Also, a nice little thing here um, when it comes to cooldowns is since the fireball didn't actually hit you yet, that means the super is not, or rather the special is not over. So it does take a little bit longer for the cooldown to recover versus if you just block it. But yeah, it's an easy way to get in basically, right? Everyone can use it, especially, you know, the bigger characters that struggle somewhat against fireballs. Uh, if you see a very obvious fireball, you don't have to worry about jumping in, worry about getting like uppercut or whatever. Just go, no, I don't care. Like you can just literally hold forward, like walk forward and just hit the block button on reaction. You don't have, even have to hit him at the exact same time, right? As long as you're holding forward, as long as you hit block, you just roll, right? You, you don't have to do special timing or whatever. It just works. Now the, here's the weakness here, because it does have a weakness. It's invulnerable to most things, yes. What it is not invulnerable to is low attacks. This is any low attack, and it is not invulnerable to throws. So if the enemy knows you're going to try to roll your way on in, all that kind of stuff, right? Well, then they can just do, you know, low or just throw you or whatever they want, right? 
now on the spot dodge so that's just back in your block button here and you do this little sway and it just avoids pretty much everything uh not everything everything but we'll talk about that in a second here uh but yeah you're just invincible right so this is kind of your ideal option when the enemy's in your face or if you do know there's a gap in their string or if you know they're just gonna do something very basic and very foreseeable right you're just calling them on their bs well then hey spot dodge it and then you just punish them right pretty easy also the spot dodge is invulnerable on frame one so you can always do it as a defensive option you always have it in play now the one thing here the spot dodge actually does go through lows unlike the forward roll right however it does have the same weakness in that you still can get thrown so the throw is a good way to beat a lot of the universal defensive options just pound for pound uh means also if you're up against a grappler character that means the grapples just get a little more scary but yeah it's a strong defensive option no matter how you look at it all right so granny's gonna jump in now and just smash on heavy right so what i can do is like hit the sway which will avoid the jump but you know not necessarily avoid the follow-ups right if i try to hit a button directly in this specific scenario i get hit right but what i can do is this right here and then do something invincible through it and then just blast them right and that's just one example out of countless potential ones right anytime you know there's an attack coming or a gap or whatever spot dodge through and then you can hit buttons or do something invincible and just go from there so between that and your roll every character at least has some defense to work with and my friends, that is the basics of the system mechanics in Grand Blue Fantasy Versus. There's a lot more topics I can go into a lot more detail to be sure, and we'll probably save that for later videos. And there's a lot of like little tech stuff that I mentioned because it's not explicitly spelled out and we can cover that later. But yeah, that's the basics, and it should give you a good idea of what kind of game it is. Uh, and in that regard, I hope this video has helped you out and I hope you understand the game a lot better for it. Anyways, my friends, that is the end of this video. So thank you very much for watching. Hope this video has found you well. Go out and play some Granblue.